Welcome to Sunday Prayer for Sunday 13th September. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us pray. We are your people, O God, not through our choice, but through yours. For in your love, you brought us and all things into being. You ordered creation that there might be life in all its fullness. And into us you pour that most excellent gift of love, the love which passes all understanding, the love which drives out all fear. So each of us, in whatever place we are, offers you our worship and our praise of your holy name. But let our worship not simply be a matter of pleasant words and pious thoughts. May your love for us bear fruit within us, in our forgiveness of others, in our advocacy for justice, in our anger and protest at cruelty, prejudice and destruction, that in this life all may know your all-embracing compassion and in the world to come receive the everlasting joy of fellowship you share with your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Book of Psalms. Our reading this morning is from Psalm 103, verses 1 to 13. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor requite us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. So far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. Amen. If you read much beyond the very well-known Psalms in the book of Psalms, you very quickly get into quite challenging territory. We often refer to the Bible as a whole, as containing the Word of God. The Psalms, though, are much more words to God. And there are many times when the psalmist doesn't hold back. There are psalms of lament, of despair, of anger, psalms calling for vengeance. And there are, of course, the psalms of comfort, of reassurance, of praise, of thanksgiving too. And a lot of the psalms contain different themes and range through a lot of emotions. Psalm 103, from which John has read for us, is one of the more comforting, reassuring psalms. It speaks of the goodness of God, of forgiveness, of healing, of redemption, of mercy. It talks of renewal, of justice, of compassion. It expresses the confidence that God cares deeply for us all. It is a good text for this Sunday. 
This is the last of these recorded Sunday prayers that I'll be doing. At least I very much hope it is. Because from Sunday 20th of September, we will be opening the church again for worship. Information about how this is happening and what to expect has been sent out to all regular attenders and is widely available on the church website and on social media too. So I'm not going to repeat it here. Rather, I want to take a moment to reflect on where we are and the transition that we'll be making this week. These last six months have been difficult. We've had to contend with fear and isolation and for many with considerable loneliness. When the news was dominated by reports of the number of people dying from COVID-19 and reports about the strain that hospitals were under, these things were hard to hear. We worried for ourselves and our loved ones. We grieved people we knew who have died. And the grief of the world has weighed upon us too. In more recent months and weeks, we've had to make further considerable adjustments to our lives in order to start to get out a bit more and to see more people. The fear and the worry have not gone away though. As people of faith though, we would want to affirm that God has been with us, abounding in love, compassion and grace, caring for us as a parent cares for their child. Through the love and mercy of God, we have got this far. God's mercy and love will not fail us as we move on into the next phase of our faith journey. We're not out of the woods yet. The number of people infected is rising again here and around the world. No one can afford to let their guard down. And that's as much about caring for others as it is about caring for ourselves. But as with great care, we prepare to return to church. We know we can do that because God blesses us with care and with love and with healing. The creativity of the Creator God is constantly opening up new beginnings. God may be the same yesterday, today and forever, but for us God is always making all things new. Let us pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. With rising infections again, we pray for those who are sick or in trouble, not only those with COVID, but also all people who are ill, especially those whose treatments have been delayed. You are the God of healing and compassion. Let all be renewed in you. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray for all who suffer the violence of war or natural disaster. And especially we pray for refugees from the Moria camp on Lesbos who lost everything in the devastating fire there. And for people in California also facing the terrors 
and destructiveness of fire. With you, may we work to bring an end to violence that destroys human flourishing. Help us to live in peace with all people and to dwell in harmony with the earth. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray for all who depend upon the support of others. Protect the vulnerable, shelter the weak, and give strength and wisdom to those who care for them. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray for elected politicians and for civil servants. Enable them to fulfill their responsibilities with integrity, with wisdom, and without any selfishness. And renew in all people a desire for justice, integrity, compassion, and the rule of law. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, and especially for our own congregation as we prepare to return to the ancient building which is our common home. Give us courage to live as faithful disciples of Jesus. Loving God, hear our prayer. You have crowned us with love and mercy, so receive the prayers we offer and help us to trust in your goodness. These prayers we ask through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And the blessing of God, Creator, Christ and Holy Spirit, rest upon you all this day and forevermore. Amen.